I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown, and welcome to the Legislative Report. I'm joined with Representative Mario Scavello, Dr. Shabria, Dr. Katara, and Betsy Olmsted, all from Pocono Tranquil Gardens, which we're going to discuss a little bit today more in detail, just in case the viewers are not familiar, because this is a new project and a new um, service that's going to be offered to the community. So we're going to try to inform you a little bit today about their efforts and what they're trying to do to give uh, an uh, enhanced service to our community, which I think you'll be very happy to hear about. So, um, Dr. Shabria, let's start. You want to say something, Mario, no, I was first? I to say it's a service, from my understanding, that, that, that is not provided in this county right now. So it's something right. that uh, I'm looking forward to seeing. Right. And, and um, we'll start, Dr. Shabria, and we'll probably jump around a little bit. Yeah. But, Dr. Shabria, this is something that, that you all as a group have really uh, had your mind on. It didn't really work the way that you initially were going to do it, but it kind of fell into place in a wonderful way. So give us some background. So uh, we've been neurologists in this community for the last 23 years. I particularly take a lot of passion in treating my older folks, you know, with, who've been affected by uh, degenerative disorders such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and I see them fall, I see them lonesome and uh, not being able to take their medications. In other words, I felt kind of incomplete. I cannot c give them complete care that they deserve at this age just because their children are far off somewhere else. And that grew that passion even more that I need to create a, an environment for them where not only just house them, but also take care of them and make sure that they're getting the best of the medications that are available today. I mean, we are in this country, you know, which only offers the best compared to most other countries where healthcare is concerned. Give them the best, take good care of them, and not only that, take it even further. So we've been working on this for the last seven years. I've been wanting to establish a facility like this. We initially, we thought we're gonna do it right behind our office so where we could just walk across and take care of them, their needs or whatever. But uh, fortunately for us, uh, Pocono Lutheran Village announced that they were closing down. It was a mon Monday morning paper we read, um, and we realized, oh my God, this is going to be a great opportunity. Let's and Pocono Lutheran Village had a great name in the community okay. too. Okay. It was, you know, they had a lot yes. of good residents there, and a lot of my patients were residents <laughs> there. We picked up the phone, and that was it. That's how we came about getting Pocono Lutheran Village and. We had our name in place. We wanted to name this place as Pocono Tranquil Gardens. And everything fell in place so soon there, we couldn't believe it. Right, and I do like the name, mm. Tranquil Garden. Just yeah. the name in itself oh, yeah. is very relaxing yeah. and, right. and shows like, you know, it's gonna be wonderful. So um, we will give Dr. Katara a little bit of chance to talk about each level of the building and the focus of each level and, and what you're gonna do specifically. So we, we have three floors to Pocono Tranquil Gardens and the first floor has, or the ground floor has got the dining area and has got offices and has some activity center. On the second floor, or the first floor, or um, the second level, we have the uh, personal care home that we are wanting to continue the same. We have 15 residents and there is room and we want to continue that as personal care facility. And on the top floor, we want to make that as both inpatient and outpatient dementia unit. And then that means that we'll have a secured uh, place for folks with memory problems that we will want to house them and give them the care. And also we will have an adult daycare with daily cognitive therapy that we will have patients who will want to come, the loved ones may want to drop them off for a few hours in the morning till evening and we will be taking care of these patients, giving them different types of mind stimulating exercises and therapies, music therapy and some cognitive therapy to rejuvenate them. And if they need a bathing service, if they need some grooming services, we will be able to offer those services to them so that the burden on the families is a lot less. And these people feel more rejuvenated and we want to give them the compassion and the human touch that they deserve um, to get better. And that, I would think that that would be just a, a wonderful thing, even if it was one day, two days, yes, even five days, as we've spoken about, that, you know, to have the stimulation with the mind when you're going through this, because I don't know if, if you get that, if you're sometimes home or if you have a spouse taking care of you, doesn't, they don't really know what to do, mm -hmm. and they're not really sure. 
what mm -hmm. to do. Right. So th that's exactly what we uh, refer to as caregiver burden. Uh, no matter how much of educational tools you give the uh, the spouses or the caregivers, you know, not to do this and take care of it in th this particular aspect in this way, eventually they get too burdened, you know, and by the time uh, uh, the patient uh, continues to grow, uh, you know, with Alzheimer's, the caregiver is burnt out. Mm. The caregiver is burnt out because the dependency in level increases tremendously. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for, we don't want to just give this as a service for the uh, patients who are affected by this, but we also want to help the caregivers. Mm -hmm. So, if they get a break for one day where they can just rest or take care of themselves, that's significant. Mm -hmm. if, and if they can afford to do it for more than one day, that, even, that is even better. And that's what we're going to promote. Because as uh, Dr. Katara rightfully mentioned, this is not about just taking, giving adult daycare services to only people who are cognitively impaired. We want to keep that part of it open to all. You know, my mother is working, my daughter is taking care of me and she's working and here I am sitting indoors seven days a week uh, do, with no place to go. This should be like an alternative place. Oh, I can send my dad here today, you know, let the bus come and pick them up. Let him, let him be dropped in by the end of the day. And, uh, you know, when he comes back, he's totally kind of feeling nice about what he did, you know, with all the activities. And I want to elaborate a little bit on the cognitive therapy aspect, also the activities that we're going to do. You know, we have uh, uh, researched this and while it is known that you know there is no cure for Alzheimer's, there is no cure for dementias, there are medications available. We want to make sure that every person who is affected by this illness is getting at least the basic medications that are available today, which mm -hmm. is, you know, and 50% of these patients are not even detected till half their memory cells are wiped out. Right? That's so scary. we want That's to make scary. sure that we give them all the adequate treatment. Now, just that adequate treatment is not proving to be enough. More than that, there is this whole concept of cognitive therapy. With cognitive therapy, what we mean is, see how stimulating good music can be? See how stimulating light can be? See how stimulating art can be? Right? So we want to create, there's a neurologist in, who's affiliated with the American Academy of Neurology. His name is Daniel Potts and he's from Alabama and uh, we had recently met him at the American Academy meetings and I shared this with him and he was so thrilled to hear this because he's, he claimed his father after developing Alzheimer's disease mm -hmm. showed artistic traits in his drawings and his paintings and was deemed to be an artist. Wow. This is wow. after wow. he's been detected. Amazing. Yep. That's and interesting. so he's opened up this whole center called cognitivedynamics.org. You can look at the website. And the amount of cognitive therapy, whether it is through art, whether it's through music, music. whether it's through drama, whether it's through group therapy. Imagine five people, six people being uh, uh, affected by this illness and they're all sitting in a room and sharing their life stories. Long-term memory is preserved. Right. They're sharing their life stories. Right. I'd like to be a fly on the wall mm -hmm. to listen to this <laughs> because yes. it, the stories you can you can get. You know, Doctor, what you what you brought up is so great because it gives the caregiver an opportunity to recharge their battery or her yes. battery because you you're constantly taking care of someone and having that break really makes them better when the the parent is back home. Right. You know, um, and I know that that's lacking here in Monroe County. So when I, I was so excited to hear what you were planning to do here because it's so important. And then the other piece is that when they're with you, they're socializing. Mm -hmm. Yes. They're, they're not social. sitting home by themselves mm -hmm. or, you know, because in some cases, some, some children might have no choice because they need to work. To, and yes. so they might be out of the house and they might be at home for a few hours. And so th to have them in a safe place, I think it, it's absolutely great. And I'm really excited to hear about what, what you're proposing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The overall, I, I, you know, Mary, you mentioned, but the overall of whether there's some cognitive issues that you're dealing with or if it's just a senior issue of utilizing the daycare, both patients. But, you know, to, to enjoy the time with someone. Yeah. Yes. So like you said, you recharge, but yeah. to really 
have that time, whether it's the you know end of life cycle or whatever, but you you get to enjoy that time with somebody instead of being stressed quality and time. feeling quality burnt time. out. It's more yeah. quality mm -hmm. yeah. as compared to that that feeling right. of, and then you feel so good about it, and yeah. and and um, that's important. That's the most important thing is to value yeah, sure. the relationships and life together. So, um, but since we're we're on the subject, and we're going to move into the the personal care part of it as well. But since we're on it, and you both are neurologists, we're going to utilize you while you're here. Oh, absolutely. It's a pleasure. <laughs> so we're going to utilize you. And because I personally, and Mario knows this, I have, you know, I have a very strong interest on in the medical side of things and the pharmaceutical side of things. But um, you mentioned, you know, 50% of the, the brain cells are already pretty much depleted by the time a lot of these diagnoses happen. And um, I'm sure there's a lot of people watching, you know, with th there's early onset symptoms, there's um, of dementia and Alzheimer's, and they present differently. Um, Parkinson's, we were talking about right. that at yes. one point um, the other day when I spoke to you. But um, can you give us some things for the viewers that are watching if they suspect possibly that a loved one or somebody might be changing a little in their personality? They might be noticing little signs and symptoms, you know, and maybe you could kind of even on, a, on an age limit, hey, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, is there anything there that you can kind of guide the viewers on? So if, if I were to speak uh, somewhat about the entire illness process, say if you label somebody as Alzheimer's disease, what are the earliest symptoms? Typically, it, it occurs only after the, it occurs generally after the age of 65. Um, after the age of 65, you can say the, uh, the prevalence is about 5%. And then at 70%, 70, at the age of 70, the prevalence is about 10%. Sure. And it keeps rising with age. But age is the biggest uh, risk factor for Alzheimer's. And natural. by 85, 50% of patients are, 50% of the elderly population is affected by this. What are the first few symptoms? My mother's repeating the same questions over and over again. I just told her we're going to go for the movie tonight. And she keeps asking me which movie are we going for. She keeps repeating the same questions over and over again. These are the first symptoms which if you see an elderly folk or elderly relative asking you the same question. I just spoke to somebody and I don't, she doesn't recall what she spoke about. Okay. Losing your personal belongings. Losing your personal belongings is the second common symptom. You know, where I left my wallet, sometimes. I go searching for something. <laughs> right. You lose your keys, right? Similarly, speech, a speech, a big speech dysfunction is not getting the right names Oops. out, not getting the right words out, okay? Not connecting. Not connecting. Word finding difficulties. Word finding difficulties. I start off saying something and my context is all lost and I don't know where, what are they talking to you about? Yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And if, and if you notice those signs and symptoms, and as you mentioned, some of the products and the pharmaceuticals and medicines that are out there, the earlier treatment, as with most conditions, the better off you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so don't be afraid to make that initial call to you to say, no. Absolutely. get things checked out. Absolutely. Representative Brown, I'm, I'm so glad that I've got this opportunity to tell you about this. But in the very beginning, uh, you know, we... Uh, uh, I have patients personally who I've been treating with medications for the last 10 to 15 years. In olden days, when I first started practicing, it used to be no, it used to be felt that somebody has developed Alzheimer's, the lifespan is going to be 10 years. Mm. Now we are seeing 15 years, we are seeing even 20 years with patients mm -hmm. who are adequately controlled. The, there is no cure for it, but these medications are proven to be. Uh, slowing down the progression of the illness mm -hmm. and today have been proven to be the standard of care as yes. far as patients with this illness are concerned. So yes. those are the first few symptoms and as the illness progresses it gets worse, the short term memory gets really worse and as you know they start losing their sense of direction, they can't take care of their activities of daily living such as even changing their clothes. Yeah. They don't, they forget that they have to shower, they forget yeah. they have to groom and they have to be constantly reminded. Right. right. So these are the first few symptoms which we Scary. see. Well, and yeah. I hope that's some good information. I think that is very good information. Right. And if, if you're not eating properly at an, at an advanced stage, does that also affect, because I've seen that in some seniors, that we're not eating. Yes. And because they're not, we're not eating, they were losing their the, the memory. They don't uh, get the nutrition. They're forgotten to eat. Because, as he said, they're forgot they're forgetting themselves to groom themselves, so also they're forgetting to eat, and then they don't get nutrition, and then there is a rapid decline. Right. So the whole idea is to collectively attack it from all angles, whether it's the drugs, whether it's the cognitive therapy, whether it's the other care 
giving so that you prevent the decline of the condition. Yeah, we knew, I know this couple that I got the Meals on Wheels and since they were getting the Meals on Wheels regularly, they were able, to, you, you can, to retain some memory and you can talk to them because they were in, in somewhere else when you and were even talking. And even socialization, yeah. was something coming in delivering yeah, those meals exactly. that makes a difference. Right, yes. In that little bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going we're gonna to move on a little bit to the personal home healthcare um, part of your facility, but um, we're going to take a short break and we're going we're gonna to look at some testimonials from um, the center at this point. I came down, I went through the place, I looked at it and I loved it more than just what the brochures told me and made arrangements, moved in and I've been here since and I love it here. Food's good, everything's good here. Activities, trips, we go bus trips to shopping, we go to movies, we go to plays, we go to the mall, we go to Walmart, Kmart, whatever we want to do. We trips to the bank if we need to go to the bank. Sometimes just for a bus ride to look at the scenery. We uh, found ourselves uh, not being able to cope with the uh, uh, activities of life uh, after finding ourselves getting older and uh, Elaine getting to 85 and Earl to 87. So we figured that we had to do something to uh, uh, be able to make out in the future because it was becoming increasingly difficult. And uh, so we came, uh, did, did some research and came here to uh, uh, Pocono Tranquil Gardens. The place, it, what really uh, amazes me the most is that it's so clean Okay, number one. That's a big thing in my book, being clean. Because my house is spotless, just like this place is. And um, everybody that uh, either works here or does what they have to do are so friendly and very uh, polite and nice, you can't beat it. And uh, they help you out a lot. I don't have to do anything while I'm here for myself. They wanted to make my bed, I said, no, no. I make my bed, and that's what I do only. The rest they take care of. And uh, like I say, all the, uh, the nurses, nurses aides, all the help, and whatever else, uh, maintenance-wise maintenance for the building, it's astronomical how they take good care of it. That's why I came here, and I'm very happy that I did. Welcome back to the Legislative Report. We're here discussing Pocono Tranquil Gardens, which is going to be a fully open, it's partially open, but fully open hopefully in a few months. So um, we're gonna continue on with our conversation with um, Betsy to just talk a little bit about the personal home health care portion piece of, of it. Yes, so we're still on our, on our second floor, we're going to remain personal care. We have 40 units. Um, we have openings right now and availability. Personal care, um, my feeling is I see so often, I've, I've been with the company for a long time when it was Pocono Lutheran, when folks come in that have been living alone, sometimes it's as simple things, like Doctor was saying, it's as simple as they're getting their medicines correctly. They're eating three meals a day. They're walking more because the hallways are a little bit longer, so they're getting exercise by default. And they're having that socialization that they don't get when they sit at home. And sometimes it's as simple as that, and they blossom. It's, it's pretty amazing. And I tell people that, that it, it, it isn't a bad thing to come into a personal care home. It's a good thing, it, it, that socialization piece. We're excited now that we've been uh, taken over by uh, local physicians. I mean, I think we're the only, we can say, uh, truthfully, we're the only community that is going to be managed and operated by physicians. And that piece of that dementia care, they're the specialists. Yeah. Uh, it was my mother. Yeah, That's, that's where I wanted to go. Yeah, now, there are different situations, and you sometimes can have a, uh, a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. we, so talk a little bit about that, because there are differences where you would have just one person, or you might have we do. a couple come um, in. We have a couple that just moved in recently. Very, very happy to be there. Um, we have one bedroom suites. Uh, we have large studio rooms that can accommodate a couple or a single. And then we have a couple of different, two different sizes, three different sizes on the studios. Mm -hmm. So something for everyone. It's nice. And then sometimes also if it's one or the other of the couple needs a little more help, 
Um, and the other one has been the caregiver, and they both can come in. Now they've got a staff that's looking after that person that needs more of the assistance. They get a little bit of a break, and they're taken care of as well. It's, nice. it's, it's all good. Um, it's affordable. This group of, of physicians I personally know are very compassionate. And right. well, I mean, wow. I, I just I can't say enough about that. I, I, I think it's all a win-win. For the it's community. great to see you back there. Let Thank me tell you. you. <laughs> <laughs> I, Thank you. W without you there, every time I've gone there, it wasn't the same. I just want you to know that. And I'm not oh, saying it was very nice. Yes, you, could, nice. you know, you know, I, I, there was an attraction there when you were there. You, you know, you greeted people at that door. You made people feel comfortable. Uh, I love and it. And you always had a smile when you were there. Aww. And and that was missing. It was missing. I love it, really, my job. it was it was and really missing, Betsy. Yeah, we Thank are fortunate yeah, to yeah. have her back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, every oh. time I go there I see her. Yeah. I I keep telling myself, you know, this place is really blossoming with just her presence there. Right. Oh, wow. She's, She's got a, a lot of experience. Like I, said, I did a show yeah. there a, a few of years ago yeah. and it was because of her. You yeah. know. Her coming to me and uh, we promoted the place and um uh, and uh, it was missing. I'm, I was there for a hundredth uh, birthday about uh, six months ago, and it was not the same. Was Thank not you. The same. I love it, and I love to be back. Thank yeah. you very much sure. for the opportunity. Well, that's another benefit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> another benefit of Pocono Triangle Garden. And we're and we're located. We're, we're the perfect location. We're right off of Route 80. Right. Yeah. We're on the same street with the hospital. I mean, literally down right down the street. Right. The the college across the way. Right. It's it's perfect. You All the doctors lot, are within services. like less than a mile, like around us. Yeah. A lot of services. Yeah. Right? Local yeah. doctors. Local, right. We have a lot of local doctors who are involved. Right. Right. I mean, I couldn't ask for a better spot. And with the hospital being closed there, it is so easy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the cancer center too. It's, it's all, all, all one-stop shop. You're all there. Mm -hmm. By the way, don't forget the senior expo. You're gonna, we're gonna have over, we have over a thousand seniors that come through oh, our doors. We're going. To make I've sure already called about it. <laughs> right. the table and, right. uh, because you know, get the seniors to know what you, what, what, what's a, the bit services that are available there. They need to know who we are, where we are, who we were, because, because you're right. We had a good reputation as Pocono Lutheran. We're gonna build on that. Mm -hmm. And and Dr. Shabria and neurology associates. My gosh, they're respected. Um, physicians and well, well known in the area. We're going to build on that too. It's, mm -hmm. it's and all good. And we have good. other well known it's doctors, Dr. Mm -hmm. Falanga, Dr. Mm -hmm. Francis, Dr. Right. Ufondu, all part of our team. Right. And what we want to really create is a model where a doctor is always on duty for the people who are living there. So you know, for minor health issues, you just pick up the phone, call the doctor, you know, ask him what's happening. If it's an emergency, he'll guide them to the emergency room. If it's not an emergency, we can handle it right there. That's even the better than a medical right director there. on site. That's several medical directors. Yeah, you can't. Right there. Right. Something you plan to have. Where, really you know, what other facility anywhere will have the the, no, the doctors Nobody. right there available? Yeah, that makes us yeah. unique. Now, you're, you, you plan on completion of the project uh, or the full the full facility, I should say, by June. By June first, we should be up and ready. By June first, yes. So that's good to know. We're going to put on the screen. Um, I think Betsy's contact information or the contact for Pocono Tranquil Gardens, so that this way, if people Absolutely. are interested in calling about the personal care or yeah. the um, daycare, they'll mm -hmm. be able to get in touch with you either if if you know on a list or whatever until you have your full opening. Mm -hmm and we'll get that information on the screen. I'm happy to meet with them after work, on the weekends, Good. have my cell number. We're getting a lot of calls already, and it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's wonderful. It's a beautiful Enjoy. location, too. Right. My yeah, gosh, it, what a beautiful, you can look at the mountains in the background, it, it's just, it and you can walk out of there and walk around the property right. and have the little bit of zebra I was just telling somebody that today. In fact, they're coming in tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know no, they're, they're you're not, you're not in, a, in a building, and you, you, yeah. you got some fresh air up there. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's the gazebo the, concept. We'll have a walking summer. trail. The yeah. gazebo concept, yeah. Dr. Katara was telling me he wants to convert that into a music garden. There you go. Oh, oh, music nice. garden. <laughs> so that the patients... Music yeah. and art. And yeah. right. So all the residents can come out during spring and summertime, yeah. and they can sit and enjoy the music gardens. Plus, they play vegetables. Vegetables out there. So some of the seniors were planting vegetables. That's part of the cognitive theorem. Yeah. Gardening yeah. is yes. going to be part of the. And you've got to take advantage of those talents. Yeah. I used to go there to learn. <laughs> 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 no, but honestly, they, they were you know they they had a nice little, and all of the vegetables that were grown there they were eating inside. They did. Yeah. The right? activity the activity girls used to chop them up and it would be like hors d'oeuvres before dinner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's great. Yeah. But yeah. you know, all in all, most importantly, there are two main goals I really want to achieve with this place, and that's that's what is going to make it unique. Uh, you know, Alzheimer's patients, as they grow older, what happens? They stop, they can't even recognize their loved ones. 
Mm. By getting them good treatment, I want to preserve that dignity of theirs. I of know course. they're going to go. I know they're going to go. But when they go, they should still be able to recognize everybody standing around them. Which is not there today. That is one uh, my, one of my final goals wow. for these patients. I know I cannot reverse their age or cure that. And the other thing is, more importantly, once we are set and we are rolling, I want to c c collaborate with the National Institute of Health in Maryland. Mm -hmm. And whatever trials are available there for these patients That's with beautiful. consents, I want to incorporate that because we still don't have a cure, but one day we will. I want to incorporate that even here so that if people, these residents or their family members are willing to put them on trial, it'll help the country find, you know, in a small way, we will be able to help in finding a cure one day. Wonderful. So these are my exceptional, you know, my ultimate goals for this facility. Well, I think they're wonderful goals. And obviously your visionary is already here with something I think that we really needed in our yes. community. So uh, we all look forward to that, to having it be in full running and, and everything being up and going. So the, the other quick question, because we're running out of time, if you can give the viewers one mental exercise to do as they age, what would that be? So <laughs> you want to answer this or should I? Crossword puzzles is one thing that they would, I would encourage them to do it on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Crossword puzzles. There was a study which said that uh, cab drivers in New York State, their cognitive decline is less because they're keeping no. constantly their minds to um, which traffic. road, which traffic they have to go. So wow. if they do crossword puzzles, that will keep them very stimulated. That's what I would feel, but I can tell. So mind stimulating exercises. And it doesn't mean, uh, you know, just uh, word finding or c crossword puzzles. If you, if you played bridge in your earlier years, I think bridge is an exciting game. Cards, playing cards, anything that stimulates the mind, mind. including reading and music and writing. You know, these are all mm. mind stimulating exercises. Very good. Very good. Mm. Well, Dr. Shabria, Dr. Katara, Betsy. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. And, uh, Thank really you. look forward to Pocono Tranquil Gardens and the services that you're going to offer here in the community. Thank you, Representative yeah, Scavello, for joining today. Well. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Representative, Representative Scavello and Representative Thank Brown. Thanks for Thank giving you. us Thank this you. opportunity yes. for communicating yes. the message across and, you know, for all the help you've given us yes. in this. Thank you so much. Thank My you so pleasure. much. My pleasure. Yeah. And there'll be some information on your screen if you do have any interest in Pocono Tranquil Gardens. Again, thank you for watching the Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown, joined by Representative Mario Scavello. If you have any questions on any other state issues, please feel free to contact my office. The information will be on the screen.